Hi and welcome to this new video and in this video I'm going to talk about a couple of very very specific things. One is tackling over control of a quad as a beginner. The other is tackling the problem of learning to fly with something like a tiny whoop and it teaching you lots and lots of bad habits that aren't going to help you when you come to fly a real racing quad. So let's start with over control. So one of the things that I would recommend if you're a beginner is to certainly initially not fly with your thumbs only on the sticks because when you fly with your thumbs only on the sticks it allows you to move the sticks very very quickly uh, and by very large amounts and generally exacerbates as a beginner over controlling the quad. So I mean, what do I mean by over controlling the quad? So what I mean by over, over controlling the quad is that when you come down to a corner like this rolling it too far and then having to roll back the other way so rolling much too much that way then rolling the other way and then trying to sort it out. So you'll see as a beginner very often if you watch a beginner fly you'll see all this rocking going on in the corners and then here and then rocking all over the place potentially crashing as well and don't get me wrong I'm not taking the mickey out of learning to fly at all all I'm tackling here is the issue of over control so if you are watching your flying back and I would recommend recording your flights and watching them back you can do that in Velostrain um, I'll just quickly demonstrate how you can do that if you turn on time attack here like this and then Three, run a race two, one. just kind of run a race here and do lots of rocking and this one and lots of rocking here and lots of rocking just fly to the end here so I'll just show you this. Okay, so having recorded that flight with time attack, I can view it. You can see here all the rocking that I was doing and what was going on on the sticks. And it's really worthwhile going back and looking at your flights and seeing what you're actually doing on the sticks. Actually analyse the issues that you're having. Look at the control that's going on the sticks and where it's going wrong. Okay, so that aside, that's just a uh, recommendation of watching your flights back, recording your flights and watching them back. How do we tackle this issue of coming into a corner, putting in a control, it's too big and then having to kind of flatten the quad out and then putting the control in that's too big and then kind of rocking around, flatting it out, too big a control again and then trying to flatten it all out. This over control issue, how do we, how do we deal with that? And actually coupled to that is, a, is a, a problem which is actually stems from exactly the same thing which is taken off like this and then goes straight over the top of the first gate. So instead of flying through the gate like this, you take off and the first thing you do, and I probably ought to do this with uh, a 30 degree camera angle because it's, that's where it's normally kind of this sort of problem manifests. It's taken off and then accelerating and going, oh I went straight over the top of that, okay, never mind, carry on. How do we deal with this problem of just putting in the power and just going straight over the top of things? Well, in the first instance it's caused by running a low camera angle, but as a beginner you need to run a low camera angle because otherwise you're flying too fast all the time and you, you need that low camera angle to allow you to kind of drift up to things like this and, and drift through them. And flying this slow with a really high camera angle is, is going to be really quite difficult. So low camera angle is really necessary in order to learn to fly because you need that slower speed. But with the low camera angle comes the throttle sensitivity. You open the throttle and you get absolutely tons of power. So and you go high into the sky. 
which at a larger camera angle, if I just demonstrate very quickly, if we go up to kind of 55 degree camera angle and I'm kind of drifting along. I can't drift along as slowly because it's a high high camera angle, but when I, I control you can see it's not as camera it's not as height sensitive. It's just accelerating me. It's not actually changing my height. You can see. And that's because the cam the quad is angled much, much more forward, so all the thrust goes into increasing speed instead of gaining height. But let's go back to where we are. We're a beginner. We can only handle 30 degrees. So how do we deal with this issue of all that power making us go straight over the top of a gate? So first thing is we go into quad settings and change our props to 4040s like so. And there's also a propeller power slider here as well which you could even reduce that as well like so say to 80% and now you really haven't got loads of power anymore even if you open the throttle loads you can see it's not really climbing very much anymore so that throttle sensitivity is now gone you haven't got loads of power of course fly really really fast but all that throttle sensitivity in terms of height control has gone next thing how do we deal with over control first of all if you're learning try to go for pinching the sticks instead of just putting your thumb on top of the sticks because it's very very easy to over control with your thumbs on the sticks whereas if you pinch it gives you much more finesse it means that you're very likely going to move the sticks less and that's quite key because you don't want to be over controlling the quad the other thing is when you come into the settings here in Velostrone, these are at effectively beta flight defaults and huge swathes of pilots fly beta flight defaults but they're not necessarily the thing that is going to help you learn to fly. So what we want to do is we want to desensitize the quad. So I would recommend coming all the way down to 350s, around about 350s, and then on your all the way down to say the 300s-ish, about 300, like that. Now what this is going to do is it's going to mean that when you push the stick a lot, so the quad's roll rate is, re is really not that fast anymore. It's really quite sedate. Once, once in just over a second for a complete roll. Whereas if we go back to the defaults, just reset it to the defaults. You can see it's actually significantly faster at the defaults and that gives you that kind of over control from small amounts of stick so dropping that down can help so we go down here all the way to the 300s 350s let's say all the way down to the 300s on your like so so now we've got a depowered quad running smaller props we've reduced the prop power as well we've reduced the sensitivity of the quad to our over controlled movements on the sticks and now this lets us learn to fly using really quite big stick movements but actually the quad is now not responding massively to those over controls and we can even desensitize it even further if we decide actually I'm still over controlling the quad then we can come down even further you, know, you can come down into the into the 250s for instance like so and now if I do a roll you can see that we're really quite sedate now in our roles and our ability to over control the quad now and to put a control movement in and for it to be way more than it should be that possibility is now massively reduced so we should see much less of this kind of trying to correct the quad as we come through the corner trying to get it level it should be much much easier because things are happening more slowly which is what you want as a beginner 
Next thing is, what about tiny whoop bad habits? Okay, so let me demonstrate some tiny whoop bad habits. With a tiny whoop, you tend to fly on your. You don't roll it, you tend to, to yaw everywhere. So the quad stays really flat and you yaw around everything. Lots of yaw control. Let me put the sticks on so you can see this. So I put the sticks on. Got a low camera angle. In fact, on a tiny whoop, normally there's even less camera angle than this. So normally our camera angles are you know, something like this, 15 degrees, just pointing straight out in front. And all of our flying pretty much happens on your like this. You're around that flag. See, I'm hardly doing any any rolling in the front at all. It's all all being done on your. The trouble with flying on yaw is that it doesn't give you any control of your momentum in the corners. So if I come down here towards this flag here, and all I do is yaw, you can see I carry on drifting way past it, hit the wall. If I just yaw here, you can see I just carry on drifting. There's, there's nothing really stopping me from drifting. Now, in a tiny whoop, because they're so light and have so little weight to them, when you yaw them, they pretty much stop on their own. They don't drift out like this, they actually stop on their own because they have no weight, so air resistance stops them really quite quickly. On a 5 inch quad, you've got loads more weight and momentum, and so when you yaw them, they don't stop, they keep going. So you actually need to roll. But you need to roll and yaw at the same time. So if we go back to our kind of 30 degree angle that we were running, you want to roll and yaw together, so both sticks together. You can see it arrests the quad in the corner. So both sticks together, it arrests the quad in the corner. Both sticks together, it arrests the quad in the corner. We don't really even need to be doing anything on the throttle. You can see I can do almost a constant throttle coming into this into this flag. See, I've had not had to touch the throttle at all. Just using roll and yaw, I can fly around these flags. Just using roll to arrest my positioning, a bit of pitch to control my height. I'm just gently pushing both sticks together in order to make the turns. You can see how roll plays a huge part in arresting the momentum of the quad as you go through the corners. Now obviously as you get better you can start to work the throttle to help you with that so you can come through here and use a blip of throttle to arrest you. Like that. But that's the, the tiny whip habit and it's one to break almost immediately is don't just fly around on your start to use roll as well to arrest your momentum in the corners. Okay, so this is how I would detune a quad for a beginner for learning to fly. Now one of the things I want to show is that if I put my camera angle back up, so this is a really really detuned quad and all I'm going to do now is bring the power back into the prop so I can fly this with power I'm just going to put the power back in. So I haven't changed any of the rates. So I'm still running those really, really slow rates. And what I want to show is that actually you can fly very, very fast with really, really low rates. You do not need massively fast rates. So bear in mind, my rates at the moment, if we check them, are in the 250s. With super, super low rates. And if I fly around this track... Yeah. 
even split S. I've got enough speed that I can get through that split S. You can see, even even though for me it feels a little bit slow, it's in terms of the roll rates, it's not quite as fast as I'm used to. I can still lay down a very very fast time without needing super super fast rates. In reality, you're probably going to end up somewhere in the 350s to 400s, and a lot of racers do race up around the 400 degrees per second mark for precision racing. It's only freestylers. I, some racers run very fast rates as well and don't want to run different rates to freestyle as, than they do for racing because they always want the quad to feel the same. But a lot of very, very fast racers run really quite low rates because you get so much better precision running lower rates. Whereas when you head up into the freestyle rates, 1000 degrees a second, loads of expo and super expo, the quad starts to become a little bit unpredictable to fly very very fast through a technical course. Okay so that's all I wanted to cover and I'll see you on the next video.